<laughs> All right. Crackers. Yes, we have some links in that will be in uh, the description. I didn't uh -huh. get them up beforehand like I did last week. Um, Let me get them up. Let me up there. So they will be up uh, after the show if you want to donate after the fact. And moving along, we are doing our main topic, which uh -huh. is stereotypes, inclusion, and representation in D&D. &D. Starting with stereotypes. You know, when I first had the idea to talk about stereotypes, yeah, um, I was just wanting to stir up trouble, really. And, um, <laughs> no, you. I don't. I find bit. that hard to believe. Just a little bit, and um, I just every once in a while I think back to a situation that happened online, and yeah. um, stereotypes are something that certain groups say, shy away from mm -hmm. in the game because they feel they're harmful. Um, lead to violence and all that other stuff. Um, I think that's uh, pretty much childish. Um, it all depends on how you do it. So mm -hmm. if you have somebody sitting at your table and you're ragging on them through the game using stereotypes and whatnot and you're being mean about it, yeah. uh, well, it probably shouldn't. No, it's probably, so, especially if you're doing like I mean, I guess, I guess the funny thing is, if you bring the stereotypes into the game, and I was kind of thinking, as you mentioned this to me, the good and bad ways you could do that. I mean, the bad is, you know, stereotyping the players. If you're if you're giving them crap because, you know, I don't even know what that even, honestly, I don't know what that means. Because the truth is, I mean, stereotype is just the most likely. I mean, the definition of a stereotype, this is from dictionary.com, but as a noun, a simplified and standardized conception or image invested with special meaning held in common members by members of a group. Cowboys and Indians are American stereotypes. That's not necessarily bad. No. And um, on the uh, the thumbnail for this this um, live stream, I, I put in a tavern. Yep. And you can't have anything really more stereotypical about D&D &D than a tavern. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who want to poo-poo, oh, taverns are so overdone. But, you know, back in the day, the tavern was kind of a hub. I forgot Kill Raven. He made a good point. Dictionaries are racist, didn't I? I, I did know that. I, I did do the, what's it called? Do the do the work? I did the work on that. Did the work. To know that it was racist. <laughs> did your anti-racism work. Right. But I mean, well, the thing is, though, like stereotypes, to me, for the most part, are incredibly. Um, <laughs> what does James Seymour say? Uh, I prefer component stereos versus all-in-one cabinet style. That's old. That's an old school reference because I don't know. I don't know that. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been in that. Uh, in that for a long time. When I was in the military, of course, you were the, P, the PX, the the post exchange, the store on on base. That's one of the ways they got your money from you is by st with stereo equipment. And you could either get a cabinet, like it had a glass door and had the, the various bits all wired. Or either it was individual things that you had to plug into each other or it was one big thing. And a lot of times it was cheap, but um, cheaply made. But they did get your money initially, didn't they? Oh, yeah. And <laughs> and uh, then you, if you if you became a, an audiophile, you, you learned that you can get all of those components individually and mm -hmm. even spend spend even more money yes even more but they were good it was good it was quality you could get quality equipment that way if you were a, an audiophile but stereotypes i mean like i, I made this in the notes they set a baseline and yeah from a dm's perspective okay most of the elves live in the woods most of the dwarves live in the mountains dwarves are gruff and they have a scottish accent elves are haughty and most of them seem like they're gay even if they're not <laughs> of indeterminate sex. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? And so and, then, and and so you can't bring the surprise or you can't bring the cool if you don't have the stereotype. You know, if I bring in a new race, let's say, say I'm gonna play the Goliath, and my character my players have never seen a Goliath before. I haven't allowed it say in third edition that came around, and I bring it in as a race in my game, I'm not gonna introduce them to the weird Goliath who acts like a hippie and hangs out in Sigil and dresses, right. you know, to cross dresses. I don't know. I'm going to introduce them to the standard Goliaths, probably have an adventure where they encounter them, get them 
to know them and let them meet a lot of stereotypical Goliaths that have certain behaviors. Um, it's literally ridiculous to think that you should not stereotype within the game world. You should, because it lets players understand, here's the baseline of your world. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. Now, now um, some other, I mean, and the thing is, some things have multiple stereotypes. Yes. So the barkeep, you could have the friendly barkeep, but you could also have the barkeep that's only friendly if you slide him some gold. True. You could also have the barkeep that's the retired 20th level adventurer stereotype. Mm -hmm. But then you'll have, to have, to have there's red a hair. reason for that stereotype. You have to have red hair to have that, though. Right, right, in your <laughs> campaign. But there's a reason for that because uh, players can be dickheads. <laughs> and, you know, they don't want no lip from some uppity bar barkeep and they'll just chop his head off at, uh, at the slightest provocation. It didn't take me long to learn that. Oh, that's how you guys are doing. Yeah. So all the barkeeps are now 20th level retired. Corporal sword, roll up new characters. Wow. Or or there's just somebody in the bar that is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, having the sagely but forgetful wizard and the kindly old priest, the edgy rogue with a heart of gold. Um, you know, your Lando, or um, not Lando. Who's it? Han Solo. Oh. Right. The players need to know how the world works on a fundamental level. Cool. Yes, Darth. That's what we're trying to say, yo. Yeah. So, and that makes stereotypes good. Yeah. You want them to be able to connect to that. I think another good thing about stereotypes is if you have a good command of what some of them may be, mm -hmm. um, when you are doing things a little on the fly and you're generating uh, encounters randomly, mm -hmm. um, if now some random encounter tables include sub tables of personality types yes but if you don't have if you're not using that you just got a quick and dirty table that says oh that you've you, bandits right okay so w what are the bandits going to be like i mean someone might survive and get questioned so mm -hmm. you might you might uh need a, a quick personality so you throw out the stereotype you know mm -hmm. i'm just an orphan i just needed this this to feed my uh my five kid my five starving kids mm -hmm. <laughs> even though I'm an orphan. Yeah, a lion thieving turd. That's yeah. what he is. So yeah. So so um or yeah, it helps it helps in game to be able to go off the cuff and be able to just say, well, you know, I'm gonna have a wizard. Oh, let's make him act forgetful. You know, I tend to do that anyway. I tend to have these wizard NPCs you make, I always have some weird aff affectation for them. I, I like playing the quirky wizard. James Seymour is a poetic Arab required in a Norse campaign. To meet representation quotas, I would say absolutely yes, yes, probably so. But we, if you don't have ten of those in your world, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> we don't need no sticking quotas here, though. <laughs> no. Hmm? Hmm? no. So, um, yeah, we've got that covered. Well, what about well within that? It's kind of a specialty. I think we want to talk about you know monster stereotypes. Sure. I mean, a lot of people. I mean, big I dumb know, ogre. Well, yeah, big dumb ogre, or even evil. How about that? That's a that's a thing. The stereotype that monsters are there for you to slay. Yes. They are not there for you to sympathize with. And you don't slay them because you're a murder hobo. You slay them because they're evil and they kill people. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes, people, people are their food. Correct. And so and so the the PCs are kind of a. A hedge between getting eaten yep. by monsters and living. So, um, so I don't, I don't get the current day um, squeamishness about monsters. It's dumb. Well, there was some back in the day too. You know, the same question. I, 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 I but it was very particular. It was. Yeah. Orc baby. Would a paladin <laughs> kill orc babies? Right. Okay. Oh, no. One. Why you have orc babies? <laughs> we all know that orcs either spring up from the ground fully grown or they are corrupted humanoids. Somebody, I don't know if it was online here in the chat or if it was on, on Facebook, had a great idea. I said, imagine a world, I think it was on Facebook, where, where, where elves, elves that turned evil became orcs. Right, that's a that's a Tolkien thing. Yeah, it is. That's what he talked about. That that would yeah. be kind of cool. Or what if you know, 
humanoids that became evil turn into beast men of various types. And, and the other thing is, is people will imagine orc babies to be like human babies. Or I imagine orc babies to be like the little aliens in Galaxy Quest, the tiny, the tiny aliens that were um, like evil. Remember the tiny little, they were cute looking. Yeah. Until someone showed weakness and then they were all over them like a bunch of um, uh, piranha. That's how I picture orc babies. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like, oh, look at the little cute orc. Oh, he's eating me. So no, no. Well, Darth has a interesting point. I, I think, I'm not sure I understand this, Darth, but maybe. How many times have PCs attached the evil, I guess, to the lich to destroy it? Is that not a stereotype? Um, Do you mean maybe? attached or attacked? Atta <laughs> attached the evil. Oh, attack the evil lich. Yeah, that, I'm not sure. Yeah, that is a stereotype. And, and that's a good point. We play into, if that's what your point is, we play into stereotypes. That's part of the fun. I mean, if I sit down with a one shot and joke and verify the one I'm going to run tomorrow, be careful because Martinson's going to be in it. The one I'm going to run tomorrow is fairly stereotypical. It's a little extra fantastical, you know, but it's stereotypical and there's no questions attached. He's talking attached. So, so what do you mean? I think he's saying PCs, maybe his. Is your analysis meant to be this? Um, so, Darth, let me say it again. Darth says, how many times have pieces attached to the evil? Evil? So, you're attaching the word evil to the lich? Is that what you're saying? Well, liches so, are evil. Right. Now, now we know there are also... Um, attacks. Bale norns. So, he, oh, I attacks. think he misspelled again. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, and that is a stereotype. Sure. And that's, that's the stereotypes that Dungeons and Dragons... I would argue is meant to play into. Right. We are monster killers. When yep. we play D and D, that's to me. I don't want to be a monster. I don't want to be an evil character. I want to kill them, be the hero, and defeat them. Uh, you tell that phone to stop, Darth. You are the. You know what it is? Phone. Your phone's woke. Because <laughs> it doesn't want you to attack the lich. It wants you to be attached to the lich, as in marrying it. Because liches <laughs> are. Not necessarily evil, according to the new learning. So, yeah, that's what you do with the liches now. You marry them. You don't kill them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, poor Darth. He bought, you, you should return that phone if it's woke. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's true. Um, yes, uh, the whole, the whole e uh, evil-good dichotomy, which was described as law of chaos yeah. back in the old, old days. I think... Uh, I think a better one would be light and dark, light and dark, mm -hmm. but serving the side of light, serving the side of dark, or you're unaligned, which would be most people. I like heroic and villainous. Yeah. I like that too. Yeah. So Right. Cool. But yeah, I think, yeah, so stereotypes, I think in the end, can they be bad? I think only if you, I guess they could be boring. If you're using them as an excuse to be a jerk. Sure. At the table, one way or another. Yeah, that's bad. I don't know how you would do that, but I guess you could. I see. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. Here. Here's a stereotype. Sure. I'm a loner. Oh. Or <laughs> I'm chaotic evil. This is what my character would do. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. That's a stereotypical. That's a player, player stereotype. That's a player stereotype that does those things. Yeah, so if we want to broaden broaden the discussion, absolutely, there would be player stereotypes that are problems. Liches were people, too, not our people, too. Martin. Were. Were people. <laughs> Anyone who advocates for liches being people get kicked out of the hobby. That's Can official. Lichen, oh, oh, James, should I tell the story? I'm oh, old. yeah. <laughs> like it. <laughs> like it. So Randy at 13 or 12, 14, I guess, 13, didn't know that word was lichen, James. I thought it was lichen. In fact, when I read the flavor text in the module, the players are going through a dank dungeon, and I say, and there are there is lichens all over the wall. And they thought I said liches. And they're like, we're only third level, dude. How many liches are there? All over the wall. <laughs> all over the walls. Oh, my God. Where does the world <laughs> now? Drop your linen and stop your grinning. <laughs> Kill Raven, if your D&D campaign doesn't feature inherent evil, you are doing you are D and D ing wrong. Correct. Hey. But you know, can you play? You can play D and D moral relativism if you want to. You can. Yeah, you can. It, it's annoying. Probably leads to arguments. I don't like moral relativism 
in the real world, no. real world, real world, in the real world, and I don't really like it in gaming. I don't care if it's a D&D or any other system. If yeah. the system, if the uh, setting is a morally relative, relativistic setting, like say midnight yeah. or some other or some other settings, I'm not going to enjoy it as much. Um, midnight's not moral relativism. Midnight is the evil's winning, and you're just trying to be good and survive. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking of um, I'm thinking of the vampires and the werewolves. Oh, and um, world of darkness. World of darkness. That's that's morally uh, ambiguous. Yeah. I think I don't like playing monsters, but yeah, and I agree with Legion. Let's just get stitches in my campaign. Yeah. So some so liches got stitches. I mean, they might still have them in them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and if you like the moral relativism, you want to talk worry about orc babies or. Can you live long enough to become the villain in someone else's story? Whatever. Okay, sure. Um, but um, I guess I guess I just it's one of those things that turns our hobby from a fun pastime where we get to um, it doesn't necessarily have, we have to be a beer and pretzels type situation at your table, but it turns it into a morality play. Yeah, and in, in, uh, in a in a kind of emo morality play. Yeah, and, and I have to admit, I've been guilty of that at the table, but not as a campaign. It's usually one villain mm -hmm. or one situation. And I can even see, I've seen Joe get, he's just like, ugh, he hates that kind of quandary. And But most of the time, my campaigns, you're the good guys, and evil um, is is the um, is the thing you want to defeat. Um, oh, <laughs> James Seymour. Is being an adventure inherently wrong? Is it honorable or good to loot cemeteries and kill disadvantaged third world people? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably, but you know, there was a period where we were discussing um, what would what might be a taboo, which yeah. was touching dead people, yeah, or looting dead bodies. Right. We were we had it was kind of a thing in our group for a little while where we yeah. were like. Uh, would that be taboo? Mm -hmm. And there are many cultures where touching dead bodies, um, robbing corpses is very taboo. So, so um, we were kind of exploring that, but then, you know, it's a game. And he died with black razors. So I'm touching his dead body. Right. <laughs> yeah. But are you bad touching it? No. No. And Bruce is right. He, he says, I'm always the villain in someone else's story. I'm the dungeon master. Yeah, man. <laughs> I have I'm thousands of potential monsters and characters and more miniatures to represent them. Yes, you do. Yeah, you represent Stop them. bragging. Yes. <laughs> Miniature master. Yeah. So, yeah, the stereotypes, I think, can be used bad. Mm -hmm. Mostly that involves people being jerks. Uh, yes. Otherwise, they are a good shortcut if you're in a in a in a um it's a good shortcut for playing your monsters and npcs we got a little uh, shadow in the house what's up hey shadow he's been posting like a madman on facebook randy liking it face post face post yeah poster posterize remember that Play post it. your face huh oh, i'll be posting posterize or what post oh <laughs> no, no, we read read the label. Read the label, yeah. Read the label. Read the, ooh, read the label. We did that in football too. We did. It was all about reading the label. Read the label, scrub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. How all right. about us moving into? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna transition this, my man. I'm transitioning. I'm the okay. dude. Shush. I'm shushing. So, part two, we're going to talk about inclusion. Yes, because we're, we're we're like that. We're inclusive. We're very inclusive. Um, so in today's vernacular, inclusion involves um, having some sort of artificial um, quota of various sorts of people in your group. So be it uh, in your company, in your game group, um, in your friend group, um, whatever. Uh, you're supposed to uh, include everybody on purpose. Uh, purposely seek out and include people, apparently. And that's just, well, stupid. Also, you're supposed to, in your game world, have uh, have things 
inclusive there as well. Yeah. Uh, so also, um, D&D is already very highly inclusive and yeah. diverse. By its uh, nature. We never, we never, ever wanted, uh, we never turned people away to, from the table unless they were weirdos. They had yeah. to be pretty, and, and they had to be pretty weird because we're already weirdos in this yeah, hobby. It a, so it was a stretch. I mean, I talk about this in the, in the notes. I mean, from 1987 to 92, I had multiple game groups in college. Um, there was one where I was the only uh, uh, heterosexual white male in the group. I mean, that was it. Yeah. I'm um, going to steal from Max Tomb. I, I, Legion has a going to get a nod here. As I told you before, I still um, I still generously from them. Um, natural inclusion, not forced diversity. I agree with that statement. Right. So whoever's around. Right. And whoever's going to be like part of the group, your friends, whatever that whatever the deal is. Um, whoever you gel with naturally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But like like I was saying in college, we had a, a quite a diverse little group and we all got along fine. Nobody was worrying about the pronouns and talking about their sexuality, even though I knew who they were and you know, uh, in the way they were. But it was fine. I mean, we just played D&D &D and called it good, man. We were, we were friends. And that's what it we was did. a live and let live. Yeah. A hobby. It always yeah. has been until, yeah. you know, was it 10 years, five years ago? I mean, you hear the odd story, right? You hear the odd story well, of. Yeah. But that's not representative of the whole. Not in my experience. Yeah. But, you know, like, yeah, I don't, I guess, you know, there would always be a woman because then she gets the, the free pass to say whatever she wants and it's, you know, pound me too and all that stuff. So she can do whatever she wants, except now with Amber Heard, maybe that's changing. Um, I think it's interesting that, you know, they would say, well, one time I went to play and all the guys were giving googly eyes at me just because I was the only female or I was a hot female and, and they kept flirting with me and all this stuff. It's like, and that, and so, I mean, I'm not saying that's okay fully, but it's not, I mean, if you're, if you're an attractive woman and you go out in public, tell me when you don't get hit on. I mean, seriously, then, well, that's a problem with society, whatever. No, it's not. I mean, people, even if hit on, is not necessarily bad. Well, it's only bad if they don't find you attractive. If they find you attractive. It's not such a big deal. Right, right, right. So if you're a hot, if you're a hot dude, then it's okay for you to hit on the hot or any woman, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or, from their point of view. I mean yeah. that's kind of a stereotypical uh, point yeah. um, point yeah. to make, but I, I don't remember the hobby ever not being inclusive. I mean, when people were talking about at the very beginning a few years back, I literally, um, yeah, the herd mentality. True, James. The, the herd. herd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Amber Herd. Amber Alert. Yeah, Amber <laughs> Alert. Dude, she got so many things rolling against her. Uh, uh, and look, yeah, Dark makes a good point. Duh. You're you're the first girl that ever showed up to a table of teen boys that have no luck with girls. Doy. They're gonna be they're gonna be foolish. Now, you know, they're creepazoids and they can be bad and they and that can happen. You can have a bad experience. But the truth of the matter is, I mean, it's just look, that's life. Deal with it, move on, get out of it, don't be in that situation. But you can't blame the game for it. And when it was first brought up, I was just flabbergasted. I'm like, what are you talking about? Who have I literally ever turned away? And and we had a girl in our group, uh, occasionally. Yep. Uh, what's his name's girlfriend? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, it was um, Sarah. Jr.'s friend. Tall Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. Well, nobody. Well, nobody. A cousin Shelley played. Yeah. Cousin Missy played once. Who else? We had several girls that came in and out of the of the group. So there were know. no issues. Shelley played for a couple of years. Yeah. So, there was no Google. Well, she was younger than everybody, but. There were no googly eyes. There was no issues. Yeah, looks like Bruce Anything had a variety. Like Bruce had a variety of people too. Yeah, but now all of a sudden it's a thing because they're making it a thing. Um, what's the most? What's the most? I don't want to say blue check marks. What's the most inclusive group you've ever played with, Joe? Can you think about the most, the biggest variety of people you've had? You would say from different backgrounds, different, you know, um, male, female, if you knew. Any preferences they had? Can you think of one that was very broadly diverse? Um, during my years at uh, in the military, you know, we I didn't really play with any locals when I was overseas, but okay. it was it's but but being in Germany and in in the local game store, there yep. were a lot of different people there. Sure. And then in the military itself is kind of a a mishmash of different kinds of people. Anyway. And so um, there were different kinds of people that we played with there. And 
Here's the thing, though. The kind of diversity or the kind of inclusion they're talking about is based on skin tone. Yeah. Which is stupid because it's like saying white people are all the same. So right. I've I've had quote unquote white folks from all different kinds of walks of life from different parts of the world and different mm -hmm. parts of the country. And they're all we're all different. Yeah. And so um, you can have a multiplicity. You can have a plurality of different kinds of people at your table, even if their skin tones are all similar. And, and so what if they're all different? I mean, here's the deal. I like I like the phrase that, you know, like I said, uh, Legion has, you know, if, if inclusion happens naturally, they happen to be the people you're playing with. Well, good. And mm -hmm. if your table ends up being a bunch of white heterosexual males, which ours a lot of times is, so what? So what? Who cares? That's who's playing. Yeah. It's nothing personal. Uh, the makeup of players at the f friendly local game store has changed over the years, according to James Seymour. That said, miniatures is still mainly guys. Sure. Sure. Magic the Gathering is a bit more mixed, is what he wanted to say. Yeah. TTRPG here is mostly mixed by race and apparent gender. And there's and the thing is, back in the day, you had hippie types, you had uh, some emo types, and you had uh, Wic Wiccan types, you know, yep. your New Agers. And so you had different kinds of people that just simply had similar skin tones, yep. which is it's a weird. It's a weird dividing line that we've got these days. Yeah, it is. I don't, I yeah. don't even know why they worry so much about it. Um, is there time? I think there's times where inclusion can be bad. If you're forced, if it's yeah. a forced situation, but yeah. it's at your table, it can't really, I don't know how it can be forced on you. Well, yeah, right. Now, I guess maybe if you're at a, um, maybe at a, um, if you came to a con, but I don't know how they would force it on you. It would just be the folks. I guess it could be bad if you had a variety of people at the table and they all hated each other. And they right. So if you're at a con game, and you, or preferences or yeah, and then so here's how inclusion at a at a table could be bad. It's mainly at con or at a game store. So mm -hmm. you you um you go there, you've paid for your game, and you sit down, and you've got folks um. You just probably want only one person, probably. Yes. And it's going to make a make a a case about their their um, particular situation, and make it uncomfortable uncomfortable for everybody else. And then and uh, so that's how inclusion that can be forced in a way yep. um, can be bad. But there's an easy out. Yeah. You well, leave. Yeah. yeah. That's not hard. You might be out a few bucks, but you just leave. Bruce makes uh, Lombardo Dick's division makes a good comment. I don't complain that X segment of player isn't in my game. Right. I'm happy as hell that I have at least three butts in the seats to play with. Then I run the game. Truth. Yeah. That's how we used to. That's how we do. I'm glad to have the people. Right. Right. And and you know back in the day it was a bunch of white dudes from Indiana. How much different could we? I mean we're going to be right. a little different, but we, we had jerks. They're jerks. We have them. They sure. Jerks. But um, who cares? No, we, we shouldn't be concerned about that. What we should be concerned about is having a group to play with and then having fun at the table once we have that group and trying to get that. together as much as we can. Those are the things, not whether they have a particular skin tone or a particular sexuality or a particular anything, except an interest in the game and having fun. That's it. Yeah, this is giving me a good idea because we're going to go transition here to, to the last part here in a minute. Because I was wondering before the podcast, what is the difference between inclusion and representation? I believe the inclusion people babble on about is what we're talking about now, people at the table. Essentially. Think, and the representation is translating that into the game world. And right. Say, all, this, all this craziness is all here. And, um, yeah, we've we got, we got stuff to say about that. Yeah, so um, moving along then. Yeah, let's do it. To part three, mm -hmm. which is representation. Yep. And um, now representation in current day, um, actually, it's a ter it's terminology that is is uh, is a current terminology. We didn't talk about representation ever, except we would, you know, represent. Yeah. Or you know, what does that what does that box of Kleenex represent? Oh, that's the terrace. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Talk about that. <laughs> the actual use for the actual good use for the word. Yeah. But exactly. these days, representation is. 
yeah. another kind of forced thing in yeah. many tables, many in many aspects. Uh, yeah. Some people want all sorts of people of different hues, sexualities, and all that uh, to be represented in the game world. Well, you remember Pathfinder 2? We, we may have mentioned this before. And, you know, we've talked about it privately a lot. Um, oh, yeah. Before we get to that, Kill, Kill Ravens, you, got, you found it. Sorry, dude. I'll hey, stop it. <laughs> Kill Raven, why is your group full of white guys? Because that's who showed up. Truth. And I think something else similar up, up here, Bruce said, uh, Wisconsin. <laughs> it's very pale there. It so is. is in, so is Indiana. Yeah, I mean, southern Indiana. For sure. Yeah. Um, but my point was, go to Pathfinder when they did their beta. They released the beta for, um, or alpha, whatever it was, for 2E, uh, second edition. And we were kind of interested in it. And then they had that, pay I remember the page number, it bugged me so bad. Page five of their playtest document says, not only should you allow people at your table of all different stripes, but they should be represented in your game world. If not, you're doing it wrong. So I have to have some non-binary halfling who is a halfling of color. And at my table, I have to have every, you should have all of them, all 97 genders. I think, I think uh, Shadow mentioned 52 genders, whatever it is. Um, but my, my point is, and when that hit me, I remember I was like, I'm out. Mm -hmm. You don't get to tell me how to play. And that's them literally, you know, people sometimes say, well, the book can't make you play a certain way. You're right. But the game designers never actually told me that, right? Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Page five and page six, your table is a safe space. Don't tell me what my table is. It's dangerous at my table. It's very, there's dice throwing around. There's dice all over the place, and it may yeah. hit you, not just your character. There might be a D4 on the ground. That's ouch yeah. time. Yeah, you better have your shoes on, son. And it better be steel-toed boots. But, um, yeah, and so, and it, yeah, I agree. Kill Raven, that was the moment I lost interest in PF2E. Absolutely. In fact, I said, I'm out on this thing. I don't care what they make. I haven't looked back And I don't Paizo know. either. And I believe uh, Patrick's not here tonight. I don't know if anybody here actually has... Um, um, actually has a, uh, a copy of 2E, but I, I believe Patrick told me that that didn't make it into the book, but I don't care. I don't care if I made it or not. Tell me where they're coming from. Oh, right. Good point. It's, it's, it's a case of saying the quiet parts out loud right. in, in a way, in a way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah, Martin's that's what they wanted. That's what they wanted to say. And then once they got the backlash that they deserved, Mr. Boivin, you need to wear your shoes inside, dude. You don't know what's been on that floor. You have no idea. You not you, you saw my floor. You'd wear shoes. Yeah. He has a dog. <laughs> yeah, and forty-seven cats. <laughs> you guys want one? I'll give it away. We get two hundred people. No. <laughs> oh, Legion. <laughs> oh. Gender fluid. Does that mean it needs to be filled up every 500 miles? I think it does. Yeah. yeah. Actually, according to current uh, thinking, it can be refilled uh, at a moment's notice. One of the dumbest, the absolute dumbest analogies I ever heard, or, or just trying to justify representation, was for women fighters. And I, I don't know who it was. It was some podcast. And the guest on the podcast said, it was a female, of course, and it said... Um, Oh, Max, you might be right. <laughs> so um, anyway, she said, we know Game of Thrones. Uh, what's her name? Brienne, the big, tough female fighter. She's like one of the greatest eight or ten knights in the realm. And that means that you should use that ratio in your world. One out of eight or nine should be a female fighter. So that, no. there she, and I'm like, wow, she was extreme. She was like the crazy outlier. Statistically, Brienne didn't count. Right. She's literally a complete um, outlier and means nothing statistically. The so top in, the, in out of the top ten, she's eight or nine. It's not the same as a one and eight or one and nine ratio. No, even one and ten, they're acting they're acting like that was the case. No, no, she's an outlier that was a unique individual. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, she she was. Yeah, I, I, I watched the show. They made her seem pretty tough. Uh, Mr. Max said she wasn't that good. But it, it, whatever you think of her, the point was this lady was trying to say that's how you should show your your D&D &D world. So I'm like, 
okay, you can. I mean, that's fair. I mean, if I have a couple, several females playing at my game and they all want to play tough warrior women, I will let them. I'm not so, stopping them. So in in, in uh, Conan Tales, how many Red Sonias are there? I mean, you know, types, types. So, so well, you got I've not read every Conan Tale, but the ones that I've read, there was one that was a pretty good bow chick. <sighs> she was good with the bow. Um and uh, then come in show, to be able to... Mr. Max and I are on the same wavelength. But then Conan beat her in bow, bow shooting. <laughs> so we get better. That's actually what happened. Because Mr. Max Boivin, I'll take Red Sonia over Brienne. Yeah, Red Sonia's... Well, especially the way she's drawn, right? <laughs> right, which is can vary somewhat, but they have a lot of similarities. Yeah, in, they do. In endowment. But yeah, so... Red Sonia was special because of the fact that she was a formidable female yeah. fighter. Uh, and in a world of, of, in a dangerous world where there's lots of men always fighting each other with swords, any woman who could hold her own against any of them would be notable. Yeah. And there wouldn't be that many. No. I say, mean, so, say, go ahead. so folks, here's a stereotype, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Women are weak, right? Weaker right. than men. Yeah. And it's not just a stereotype because it's based in reality. Yes. But and folks will say, well, it, in a world with spells, why would you have women like that? Well, because gravity is in those worlds too. You got gravity. <laughs> the sun goes up and goes down the same way there as here, unless you have a different world with different cosmology. Maybe there's two suns, or maybe <coughs> the sun never sets, and your 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 world is odd that way. But there are some physical realities that there's some there are things in the game world that diverge from the real world and but there are a lot of similarities um a humanoids have two legs two arms ten fingers all that stuff and women still bear the children and because women bear the children that is a dividing point between men and women and many of the physical traits of women fall on that they yeah. They build on that, or are the childbearing role of the woman puts um, has a relationship with all the other physical traits they have. Sure, yeah. But here's the thing: in D and D, like I said, any woman sits at my table. She wants to play. You know, she rolls eighteen one hundred. I don't care. You can be. You're the exception. You're yeah. the and if there's but, three men, you're all three the exception. I don't care. But don't don't try to tell me the rest of my world is going to be, well, since there's three female fighters that all have 18 strength in, in this adventuring group, you know, three out of four fighters should be female because we yeah. have four fighters. Get out of here. So, yes. So yeah. representation is that. where yeah, exactly that. Where the current woke mob wants everybody, everybody's game world to have have analogs to the real world as far as sexuality and race. I mean, you don't, and you don't need any of that. I mean, uh, John Carter, very great stories. Mm -hmm. um, on the, on earth, you had earth people on Mars. You had a different set of people. You know, people tried to make them analogs, but they really weren't. You had red skin, you had red skin and green skin and white skin and black skin but the black-skinned people were not African. And when it says black, it was black, not shade of brown like we have here. So uh, the red people were not Mexican or whatever. The green were definitely, they weren't even human. But so you can have different sorts of people. That doesn't have, your game world does not have to represent the real world in any fashion as far as that goes. Yeah, you could have a world where, like you said, all the men and women are de completely equal. I mean, I think drow female were considered stronger physically than drow males in the standard D&D. Uh, James Seymour asked this, women are stronger than men in some aspects. According to modern science, isn't long-term existence and hardships one of those? What does that mean? Stamina in the face of hardships? I don't think I don't think that's true at all. What about their, don't they, I think women are supposed to have a, are they supposed to have a, are they supposed to have a sturdier constitution? Men? Uh, okay. In general, in general? In, during childbirth, your physicality, a woman's physicality changes and they have a higher pain tolerance, especially for the birthing process. But in general, women, women do not have a higher pain tolerance, like some people say. 
or because it's it's shown in records that women take more sick days from work than men do even considering um uh, um pregnancy so no i don't think women are stronger than men in general at all yeah. i mean um i don't i think even smarts i think the way the the, the bell curve plays out women uh men have a higher uh level of variation so you yeah. have more outliers at either of the tails of the bell curve right but more women exist at the at the top of the bell curve there are more certified male geniuses than females right and really idiots correct correct and idiots right and, and idiots women stay closer to the mean so in some sense they're averagely uh I mean, modally in some way, smarter, probably average, you know, in terms of mean, they're closer to the mean, but uh, yeah. There's more average women than average yeah. men. That's IQ based actual statistical yeah. fact. Um, yeah, but I mean, I'm not, yeah. Science is dead, kind of true. Women can do mm -hmm. one thing that man can't. Yep. Give birth. And it's not, it's not, you're right. It's not a it's, small thing. No, 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 Huge. not at all. I don't want to do it. I'm glad they do it. I'm and glad. somebody, what was this up here? Somebody said, oh, yeah. If you roll 800 strength, should it be seen in your physics? Probably. Oh, yeah. I, I said a buff woman. It doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean you're a hulking monster, but you're not going to have noodle arms. Well, you're going to have big arms. You're, you're going to be tough. Yeah. Thurston and Alpha Fourth, good point. I like that phraseology. We're the brightest and the dumbest. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. it is true. It is yeah, true. We are. Yeah. And I think the same bell curve exists for uh, mental illness yeah. as well. So there's more crazy people that are men. Yep. We're and probably more men. evil. I mean, probably like true. the, the yeah. Hitlers of this world. Yeah. There's okay. more of them that are men than are women. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Can representation be good, though, in your game? Is there a way to do it? Under this paradigm? <laughs> Under the, um, the idea of representation, meaning let let there be. So it, could we loosen it up and say, would it be? If, if I've, I've threatened to do this, and I've tried to talk Patrick into it, but he won't, because um, I don't want to get his game company in trouble. But I've told you that I wanted to create. And this is hate me if you want. I don't care. I wanted to create a world where there was no homosexuality. And and part of it's just out of spite, a meaning that can I play a gay character? Because generally speaking. I don't care if you play a gay character. I mean, when I say I don't care, it has no bearing on the on the game. Do what you right. want. Think of your character if you want. Keep it to yourself. Unless you just want to say, hey, I, I sleep with that dude. I'm like, whatever, fine, move along. Next fight. Or whatever we're going to do. It doesn't mean anything to me. Same with the guy I want. I want to sleep with the, with the waitress. Whatever. So unless I want to, you know, turn her into a succubus, I might do that. Or an incubus in the case of the gay guy. But the point is this. I wanted to, out of sheer frustration, I wanted to let this build a world and have no gay people. Meaning it's not a thing. It's not going to happen. It can't happen. It's never been conceived of. How well would that go? <laughs> well, at your table, it wouldn't be an issue. No, what if I published it? I probably couldn't publish it. I guarantee you, if Benjur gets stuff taken down for having a, a villain that actually kills babies, and then <laughs> I would have no way to publish it. <laughs> yeah, it would probably depend on how you stated it. I mean, if none of the protect or none of the um, characters listed in, in your game, there was no indication of any of them being gay, that's one thing. But yeah. if you say, if you have in big bold letters in the lore of the game, no gays, no gays, that's different. Yeah. Um, but you, it doesn't mean you can't publish it. It just means you'd have to self-publish it. And right. and we'd have to sell it on Biggest Geekus and someone would find the server and blow it up probably. <laughs> so. Just, just, just wondering. <laughs> I didn't say I was going to do so it. So I think yeah, I Rippers... Gonna representation in the in the current understanding of it i don't see a good way of doing that um it's good for the folks who want it yes okay yep. if you if you want to just have your typical um medieval fantasy or sword and sorcery type world where there's whatever there is and you decide that either randomly or you pick up something that's published and you just run with that and you don't worry about any particular type of person being represented Mm -hmm. um, I don't think representation is something that needs to even come up. Yeah, to me, there's no need. There's no need for it. No, because the purpose of the game isn't representation. The purpose of the game is to have fun. 
And if I want to have a villain that happens to be, or a hero that happens to be a gender fluid halfling, I can do it if I want to, but I'm not going to do it because it needs to be there. Right. It's going to do it because maybe I want it to serve the story. Any, any, uh, any similarity to groups or peoples in the real world that happens to be in your game world is just something that you do. Yeah. You have decided that it's good for the story at the time, yeah. but you don't, you don't set out to um, say, okay, the demographics of this world are evenly spaced between all different races and evenly spaced between all different sexualities because that's what people think it should be. 0.6% are trans men, 0.3% are this. Yeah, exactly. No, you don't do that. No, I mean, unless you want to. I just don't see the purpose, the point of it. I, I can't you're done, see when you're, when you're, when, when you're right. battling the forces of darkness, <laughs> who, who cares, cares who next, who's next to you? Who Let's cares who you're sitting with? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, can you cast that spell, homie? Then you're my partner. And, and you know, when the lich rolls up, you're not going to ask him what his sexuality is. <laughs> Don't care what you or what it was. No. I probably can get too much into the sex. Well, no, he's he's permanently got a boner. Sweet. Dude, so we're basically saying that this stuff is poop. <laughs> Representation, worrying about stereotyping, inclusivity. That's true. Legion nailed it. I don't know. Trans something. They are. They are pe persons of indefinite gender. Or if, sex. They're, if they're both male and female at the same time, would they be binary? <laughs> no. What's the title to that? <laughs> that's one way to use that word, but I think if they're both, that's a different word for that. Okay. Oh, that's the hermaphrodite, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the word? That's, That's the word. I, I wasn't thinking genitalia, but yeah, true. Strangely enough, I was not thinking genitalia. How weird is you that? You were just thinking um, in their head? Oh. In their mind? Yes. Uh, indeterminate gender, yeah. But um, yeah, true. Elves are that, but not necessarily. The lich's phylactery is a severed ding. Oh. <laughs> ding, ding. Get the phylactery. I'm not getting the phylactery. I'm not touching that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, here we go. Bruce got me the correct word. Intersex. Well, her, yeah, intersex. Is that the proper? Well, I'm. I guess hermaphrodites are considered intersex, but intersex isn't just uh, limited to that. Sounds too complicated. Yeah, who cares? Especially for like a tiny, tiny, tiny percent of anybody. Green oh, arrow. We. Can, I'm not sure we can. Oh, Joe's showing it. He's brave. The cork of Vecna. I want to even. We're all inclusive here. We are the cock of Vecna. Uh, uh, so who's going to cut theirs off to get the <laughs> truth? You found the relic. It's there in the phylactery. The only way you can use it is if you cut yours off. Now who's going to do it? It's there in the phylactery. I tell you what, back in the day, if it, if it was a relic artifact with powers, there'd be a lot of penisless characters. In <laughs> who's the first to cut their wiener off? I mean, there was a... Um, a uh, Knights of the Dinner table, table episode where they had the head of Vecna. The actual head. Mr. Bravan, is it bigger than mine? Well, it's a relic. <laughs> think about it. Oh, it would be shriveled, though, you would think. <laughs> I mean, it could be well-preserved. Wait a minute, I'm confused. Thurston Howell IV just got off Legion's channel to catch Biggest Live. Little did I know that Max did, too. Oh, Max, so he's been going back and forth between his show and ours? Oh, look at that. Look at that. I feel honored. <laughs> or maybe Max is able to be in two places at once. It's someone's Schwartz. Is your Schwartz <laughs> as big as mine? Right. That's a movie reference. <laughs> yes, it is. You know, when I first saw that, I didn't like that movie that much. But I really uh, like it. It's, it's a little bit on the extra cheesy Mel Brooks side. Yeah. I like Rick Moranis, though. I miss that guy. Too bad he hasn't been in the movies too much. I know he's supposed um, to be back on something. Some Honey, I Shrunk the Kids for the third time or something. Oh, <laughs> Max isn't streaming today. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. well, All right. I think we've we've given the answer. So whoever is concerned about stereotyping, yes, do it in your campaign. It's a good way for your... Oh, oh, gatekeepers. Oh I, oh, I wish I had time. Tomorrow, I really want to do that because isn't that... Did you guys decide what kind of cool thing you were doing? 
because I saw the other day they were. I didn't have time to get on last week on uh, the chill I had planned to, and they were talking about doing something cool and gatekeepers. I'm I'm way behind, but I, it sounded like something I wanted to get a part of. So get a piece of that, yo. Get a piece of that gatekeeping. Something, some kind of good idea. They were talking about stuff. Yeah, Bible but, study. So then stereotyping. I can't tomorrow either. Dang it. That's right. I'm gaming. <laughs> yeah, you got so, your Wednesday uh, thing. Stereotyping is good. Inclusivity is fine at your table, but do it naturally. Thanks. Yeah. And then representation is dumb. So. Yeah. There's no real place for it. No, there isn't. I mean, if you want to, yeah. but it's. You know, if you want to be dumb, go ahead. Yeah. So, so can it be good? Nah. <laughs> but you can do it. You, you can, can do it if you want. Ahead. You can play the game wrong if you want. Why does anybody want the real world in their game? It's stupid. Stop it. Right. Yep. Shadow anyway. Pop. They do exist for a reason, uh, stereotypes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Oh, here it is. Stop. Let's stop. Don't go. How to run an all-blank race party here and how to run a campaign. Oh, yeah. That sounded fun. Everybody's out. Yeah. Everybody's humans. All right. I'm ready. I'm done. No problem. No problem. Cool. And on that note, subscribe. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Do all the things. Yeah. Go to biggestgeekspodcast.com and learn how to um, <laughs> um, give us your monies.